I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I want to thank our sponsors this week, and that's Carbonite, Online Backup, and, of course, as we mentioned last week, Citrix Systems, Go to Assist. I want to thank them for sponsoring Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. We are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, and all the netcasts that make up the techpodcast.com network. You know, we had a big deal happen this week on techpodcast.com, and that is that uh, the Tech Podcast group of podcasters, netcasters, whatever you want to call them, uh, we got things straightened out in iTunes where we have a special section just for Tech Podcasts podcasters. Yes. So, what do you think of the new arrangement? It's a little different, huh? I <laughs> just keep switching things up. Gotta keep it interesting. I mean, after all, that's kind of that's kind of what it's all about. Is just keep switching. Th- plus, I keep tweaking and working on things. Yes. Now, you will notice though that as I talk to you here, and then cut my eyes over here to look at my screen. <laughs> I may have to, you may get this feeling that I'm not paying attention to you, but I've got to look at my screen to know what's going on. So, what are you going to do? Anyway, lots to talk about this week. Oh my goodness, lots to talk about this week. Uh, the neatest thing, now this is, let me just tell you right up front. This is going to be a Roku edition. Because <laughs> there's a lot of Roku news. You know about Roku, right? Yes, the streaming appliance, if you will, that plugs into your TV. And uh, I like the fact that it has HDMI out and I can plug it directly into my HD TV and see it all on the big screen. Yes, including DrBill.TV, this very show. How cool is that? Anyway, so the, the big news about the Roku. See, I'm looking at the screen. <laughs> The big news about the Roku is that there is a new version of the Roku called the Roku 2. Now, what's interesting about that is the word Roku in Japanese means six because the guy who came up with the company, it was his sixth project. So, that means this is the (laughs) 6-2. You know, 62 was a good year. I remember it well. Sad to say, but that's how old I am. Anyway, (laughs) so Roku 2 has new features, including a motion-sensitive... I'll pretend that this little doohickey here is the remote. (laughs) A motion-sensitive remote. This is not a remote. This is actually a handle thingy. Kind of like on a motorcycle. I don't know why it's on my desk. Why does anything end up on my desk? There's a great many weird things, including a Bluetooth headset on my desk. So I don't know. Anyway, it's a motion sensitive. <laughs> you knew I'd get back to the Roku too, right? Anyway, it's a motion sensitive remote that allows you to move things like your cursor on the screen. And most importantly, most importantly, It lets you play Angry Birds. That alone is worth the upgrade. (laughs) Ha ha! If you are an Angry Birds fan. And you know, I told you I'm not much of a gamer. I don't play too many games, but I play Angry Birds. I mean, it's it's a social phenomenon. (laughs) Phenomenon. Yes, that goes back to an earlier geek culture thing where... (laughs) <laughs> I got to tell you this story. A guy who watched the netcast heard me say phenomenon, <laughs> and he recorded it, <laughs> and he put it to the manumana, 
you know, the Muppets. So it goes, phenomenon, do 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 do, phenomenon, do 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 do. Yeah. Proving that the people that watch Dr. Bill are just as strange as I am. Ha ha! What does that say about you? Think about it. Okay. So, there are new Roku 2 boxes now. Here's why that's so cool. Not only because they're new and they're cool, but also because I told you there was something special coming for the 200th netcast of drbill.tv. Yes. And I told you I didn't know what it was. And I didn't. But now I do. We're going to give away a brand new Roku 2. Yes! I hear much shouting and jumping up and down going on out there. So, all you gotta do is you send me an email. Now wait, wait, wait. Don't send it just yet. It's gotta be a special email. Here's the thing. You gotta put in the subject line of the email the phrase Roku R O K U to the number giveaway. Yeah, like it says on the screen here. Anyway, put that in your subject line. That way my sorting mechanism on my email will put it into a special folder. Now, here's what needs to happen. Once you send the email, it will go into a pot. Virtual electronic one. And then it will be randomized. And then on the event of the 200th episode, we will pluck a name out of the random pot of email addresses and one and only one person will get a Roku 2. Dude, how cool is that? So, send your emails now. Now, it really won't help you to send more than one email. Okay? So, you know, you don't have to flood my inbox with tons of emails over and over and over. It's not going to help. But you can enter one time is all that's necessary. And between now and the 200th episode, this is episode 198. Yes. Yes? Is it 198? Uh, yes, it is. I had to check to be sure. But it is episode 198. So, you knew that already because you saw it on the screen, see? But I, I don't see the screen. So, I didn't know. Anyway, uh, so the Roku 2. So it's cool. And I ordered me a new one as well. And I'm looking forward to getting it. I saw that it shipped. It's already shipped from California. So the little, the little donkey will be carrying it across the plains. Yes. Oh, well. That's why I ordered it well before the 200th episode. So I'd have plenty of time to get here. And then I'm going to have to ship it to you, so I don't know where you are. You might be in Gookamunga. So, there you go. But at some point, you'll have your very own Roku. Now, here's the thing about that. <laughs> Once you have your very own Roku, you can watch the Blueberry Network, the Tech Podcast Network, Twit, Techzilla Own Revision 3, and all the other Revision 3 programs, all the good stuff that's so techy, it will blow your mind. Yes. You wondered how I got this way, right? Anyway. <laughs> okay, let's go to other things. First of all, let's talk about one of our fine sponsors. We'll start out with Citrix Systems. Citrix has this cool product called Go to Assist. And if you will sign up, click on the link that I'm going to display right here. It's one of those bit.ly links. Then you can go to that and you'll be able to get an amazing offer. 30 days free use trial of GoToAssist. Now, GoToAssist is cool because you can actually, somebody can give you permission to take over their computer and you can go on their computer and fix things. And being the tech dude and dudette, if that's a word, that you are, person, 
then you can take over their computer and fix it, which is splendid and worthwhile. Yes. So, you need to take advantage of this offer, and it will be just so cool to try it. No obligation whatsoever. How cool is that? All right, let's go back to the blog, shall we? The blog, of course, is drbill.cc for computer curmudgeon. Now, Byte Magazine, back in the day, long ago, Byte Magazine was the magazine to read if you were a geek, and there weren't that many geeks. We were rare, you know, and it, maybe an endangered species, I don't know, but we were very rare, and the Byte Magazine had all kinds of cool tech stuff in it. So, matter of fact, they had one columnist, Jerry Purnell, who is also a science fiction writer. And he and David Niven wrote The Moat in God's Eye, which is an awesome science fiction book. But anyway, just a bit of trivia. Jerry Purnell was one of the original uh, tech journalist pundits in Byte Magazine. And as a matter of fact, Leo Laporte reading his column is why he got into tech journalism. Whoa! That's pretty cool. So, I used to read the, uh, the Jerry Purnell column, which was called Computing at Chaos Manor. He calls his house Chaos Manor because it's kind of messy. Aha! Most geeks' houses are somewhat messy because they're more involved in the technical virtual world than they are in the real world. Occupational hazard. Anyway, so Byte Magazine is back. They resurrected it. <laughs> Sound effects. Anyway, they resurrected it, and it is now an electronic magazine, and Jerry Purnell is back. Cool. So I was pretty excited about that. I, I got to admit, you know, it just brought out the old curmudgeon in me, the old geek in me. Yeah, I remember back in the day when Byte Magazine was on the newsstands. Anyway. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> Star Wars The Old Republic is available for pre-order. Yes. <laughs> so, the Game Master's kind of psyched about this one. He's pretty, he's looking forward to this massively multiplayer online game. So, uh, let me read the article here. It says that... The pre-order page for Star Wars The Old Republic is up on their site. Get thee over there now. This, this person who wrote this is probably as weird as I am, it sounds like. Especially if you want to grab one of the special editions or lock down a code that will give you early game access and exclusive in-game content. The $150 collector's edition looks pretty loaded. A statue. It's got a statue. A collectible metal case for the custom game or for the game disc, an annotated journal, a map of the old republic's galaxy. Map of the galaxy, dude, it's a big map. A custom security authentication key, the game's soundtrack, and all of that is tucked inside a high quality collector's edition box. Whoa! Grab this, and you'll also get 30 days of game time and these online goodies: a flare gun, a training droid, a holo dancer. How'd I have one of those? A holocam, a game vehicle, a mouse droid, like Mickey, <laughs> and special in-game vendor and unique items. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> sign up now. Get in line now. <laughs> anyway, also I want to mention once again, dude, I'm giving away a Roku too. That's right here. It says, yes, you read that right. You can register to win a new Roku 2 HD from DrBill.TV. Dude, <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that because I want to share the love of the Roku to the world. You know, I'm only going to give away one, but eh, I do what I can. Oh! Yes, it's time for the Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week ties in. See, I told you it was going to be a Roku kind of show. It ties into the Roku giveaway because it allows you to do something really cool. This software you can install on your local PC. Then you register it with your new Roku box. 
and then it will allow you to stream video, audio, and photographs from your local PC to your Roku to display up on your big screen. Dude! So I'm going to show you a demo of that right now. Okay, this is the main menu screen of the Roku box. And as you can see, we've got techpodcast.com. We've got Blueberry, both of which you can watch the Dr. Bill show on, by the way. But let's go all the way to the end of my channel lineup here. And you will see a channel that I have added. Boy, long ways to go. A lot of channels. <laughs> there we go. The Gabby Personal Media Channel. That's the one I want us to look at. Uh, this is the Gab Gabby software that is our Geek Software of the Week this week. Now it does show that it's in beta and you need the beta version to work correctly with the um, option for adding it to your Roku channel. So I'm going to go ahead into the Gabby software selection. It will retrieve the servers that are on the network and so it will search for the media servers and it will find one which happens to be my laptop that we have the software loaded on. It will load the server content and basically what it's going to do is give you access to your file structure uh, in your video area, music area, and your um, images area. So it will go out, it will search and find that, and it gives you a navigation menu that's similar to uh, most of the menus that are available through the Roku. There's video, there's images, you also have music, and you even have playlists. You can set up playlists and play them uh, from that. So I'm going to go on over to the music area, select that, and what it will do is load everything that I have in the music area uh, and all of the directories that I've created. So these are all different directories. I'm going to go find one that uh, is familiar to me here that I can play real quick. We'll pick a... Oh, there we go. Second chapter of Acts. That's a music group that I like. Let's pick that. And here, you see that I've got the songs from that album. And uh, because I have done the tags on the MP3 files, it actually has the album cover for that. So uh, I'm going to pick a song, start playing it. And of course, it'll play it through the television. All right, I'll hit stop. And I can back up, pick additional songs, pick other albums, and so forth. Now let me go up a level here and go to video. Now it sorts the folders by, uh, if there's a lot of folders, it will sort them alphabetically, A through M and so forth. And uh, if there's a file in the main directory, of course, it'll, it'll show that. Um, trying to see what we have that might be useful. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> These are the files from the Vertzine netcast. And there is actually Vertzine 10, which is the last show. So if I select that, it'll retrieve that show. Now this is interesting. While it's retrieving it, it will actually play music randomly from your music selection, which is kind of nice because it's initializing. When you think you've heard about and it'll just pick a song and kind of give you background music to wait while you're waiting on the initialization. Once it completes, it'll start playing the video. And there we have the Vertzine netcast. Now I should say I'm shooting the screen here, so I'm probably not getting the entire screen just right. Greetings once again, this is Dr. Bill Bailey and this is the Vertzine Netcast. Glad you're 
here this week to hear the net cast and I'm gonna stop it right there and go all the way back up. Matter of fact, I'll just go all the way up to the main level. But that's the Gabby software. As you can see, it's it's very Roku-like in the way it operates. And um, it allows you to play your personal media from your computer through the Roku device and actually through the network if you think about it because the PC is sitting there on the network, the Roku is sitting on the network, and that's what the Gabby software does is allow you to make that connection between the two. So very, very neat software. Okay, so wasn't that cool? Aha! I like demoing things like that so you'll see how they work and how they come together kind of like a geek project. There you go. So let me talk about another one of our wonderful sponsors. And that is, of course, Carbonite Online Backup. Now, your computer, this is a sad truth, your computer will eventually croak. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that, but it's a mechanical device. And mechanical devices eventually, they just don't make it. You know what I mean? So... The important thing, though, is not the computer so much as the data on the computer. So well before a disaster occurs, you need to use Carbonite. Now, through this special URL right here, another one of those bit.ly URLs, if you'll click that, it will give you a special deal on Carbonite Online Backup. Dude. And if you actually sign up for a full-blown... Carbonite, you know, pass the trial. If you sign up for it, it will give you two months free on your regular subscription. Now, that's pretty cool. Now, I interviewed David Friend, who is one of the founders of Carbonite, on an earlier netcast many years ago. And he really is serious about this product helping you save your data. Matter of fact, he told a story about how his daughter was working on a college paper and lost it. And that's what inspired him to create this company and create this software to help back up data. So he's got a personal stake in this. Personal experience that helps him understand why this is such an important thing. You need to back up. I tell you that all the time. I've told you about times I didn't and what it, what it meant for me, you know. So anyway, take advantage of this offer. It's a great deal. And we really thank Carbonite for sponsoring Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. Alrighty then, let's get back to our blog, shall we? Now we talked about the Roku, we talked about the Geek Software of the Week. We also need to talk about this item, which is will Apple buy Hulu? I don't know. <laughs> there seems to be diversities of opinion about it. But it is something that Apple is considering, and they've got 76.2 billion with a B billion dollars. So they got plenty of money. They're the second most, uh, what do you call it, six financially successful company on the planet. Guess who's number one? Microsoft, yeah. Anyway, so, but other people are considering buying uh, Hulu as well. Now, for instance, don't hold your breath on that Apple Hulu deal, says uh, Peter Kafka <laughs> from All Things D. He says, yeah, Apple may be considering it, but there are other likely buyers. He says that uh, even though Apple has all the cash it needs to buy it, he says industry folks that he's talking to says that Google would like to get their hands on Hulu. And Google's, Google could afford it as well, believe me. Also, Amazon is another logical buyer. Okay, I could see that. And then uh, Yahoo might want to buy Hulu. Okay. I really hope it's not Yahoo myself. Yeah, just me. Okay. Uh, Verizon, AT&T, and Liberty Media, DirecTV. They're the people behind DirecTV. And he says the last one in particular appeals to some folks I talked to who see Hulu as a natural extension of the satellite TV company's existing business plan. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I am just not one of those business dudes, you know what I mean? I don't know about these things. But I do know that I personally won't be buying Hulu. Just, you know, the spare change is not in my pocket to buy Hulu. However, I have subscribed to Hulu Plus. Eh. 
But in terms of buying the whole company, nah, I think I'll give it a pass. Okay. Next item, what about Hulu Plus? Are you a Hulu Pluser? <laughs> you know, I, I was a late adopter of Facebook. I pretty much had to have my arm twisted into using Facebook. A lot of my friends said, come on, Dr. Bill, get on Facebook, please, please, please get on Facebook. I was like, you know, okay. So I did, and I, you know, I, I check it occasionally. I'm not a big Facebookery type dude. But anyway, I'll do what I can, when I can, how I can, <laughs> with Facebook. And, you know, I'm not, I, I posted a few pictures, including one of me with my very first car when I was 16 years old. <laughs> you can check that out. I was skinny as a rail. I'm not now. No. Anyway, check it out. So, um, also, while I'm at it, join our Facebook group for Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. There's only a few people in there, and it makes me sad. Anyway. I am on Google Plus, so if you want to put me in a circle, I'm up with that, uh, or down with that, depending on what part of the language you want to use. Anyway, so I may get into Google Plus more as I go along, but I'm just kind of slow to get into those kinds of things. Know what I mean? Now I know TechPodcast.com is using Google Plus for its huddle feature. It's very footbally. You know, getting the huddle. But anyway, no. What they're using the huddle for is to video, videographically connecting with one another and talking about general things. And then as it's being videoed in the huddle, they show that. Yes. So, that might be fun. I may do that. But so far, I'm just kind of, eh, I'm okay with it. Know what I mean? Well, hope you enjoyed that really cool demo that I did on Gabby. Yeah, Gabby reminds me of the uh, westerns, the old westerns with Gabby. Gabby Hayes. Never mind. Anyway, I guess we're done for this week. Remember until next time that the doctor is out of here.